Good morning and good evening. My best greetings and welcomes to all of the present here today at our third annual disco uh, discussion session of our International Student Seminar Series, which I believe have become a good tradition of, of cooperation between our universities. So let me express the gratitude to Nonaka Sensei and Professor Olha Nikolenko for organizing them and giving us the opportunity to increase our intercultural competence. This year, we have the chance to hear the lectures from our professors, as well as 12 student reports. So Professor Olha Nikolenko taught us how to overcome fear based on the novel, Me or My Son by Astrid Lindgren and Professor Susumu Nanaka-san about the similarities between the writing styles of Akutagawa Renosuke and Mikola Hohen. And students have presented many and plenty reports about the Tanka poetry, about the problem of otherness and isolation in youth literature, about Ukrainian fairy tales, subcultures, Ukrainian festival like Christmas and Ivana Kupala. We also have spoken about symbols of nature and traditions, issues of pandemics, gender issues and gender bias, reflection of earthquakes in art, and as well, and Along with that, the film Hacksaw Ridge. So as we have had a very insightful and informative presentation, I hope we will have same fruitful discussions here today. And my colleagues Katya and Toko, uh, together with them, we will be helping with the discussion. But actually, before we start, let me give the floor to the Dean of the Faculty of Philology and Journalism of PNPU, Oksana Grelchuk. She will tell us a couple of warm words. So, Oksana Boristina, please. Я щиро вітаю сьогодні досить таке високоповажне наукове зібрання, яке сьогодні зібралося в такому ще онлайн режимі на організацію та проведення одного із наукових семінарів, які тривають уже ось багато років поспіль. Катя, I would like I would like to sincerely greet everybody who has gathered here online to host these scientific seminars which have been taking place for many years. Мені б хотілося сьогодні від себе особисто, як очільниці факультету, а також від ректорату нашого університету, від імені нашої ректорки Марини Гриньової, подякувати сьогодні усім організаторам серії таких наукових семінарів. I would like to thank the organizers of the seminars from me personally as head of the faculty and also from our rector Марина Гриньова. В першу чергу я хочу відзначити і те, що ось уже наші партнерські відносини із нашим дружнім університетом з Японії, університетом Сайтама, тривають досить певний і довгий уже період. First of all, I would like to underline that our partnership and our cooperation with Saitama University has been going on for many years at this point. Шановний доктор філологічних наук, професор Сусомо Нанака, я дякую вам зусібно за те, що наша співпраця з нашим університетом і з факультетом філожурналістики має вже свою історію. Я хочу подякувати вам також зусібно за вашу потужну підтримку, підтримку нашої України, нашого університету, наших людей під час воєнних Dear Professor Nanaka-san, I would like to personally thank you uh, for the fact that the collaboration between our universities has a long and fruitful history. And I would like to also thank you for supporting our students, our teachers, Ukrainians during these difficult times, during the times of war. Хочу подякувати вам також за те, що студенти вже в цьому навчальному році, студенти нашого факультету, а саме Олена Муха, Інна Кричко, мають можливості навчання в університеті міста Сайтама. I would like to thank you for the opportunity that you have given our students, Олена Муха and Інна Кричко, to study at Сайтама University. 
Щиро дякую також за нашу співпрацю нашому, нашим колегам, нашим партнерам, нашому Львівському національному університету імені Івана Франка, зусібно професорки Ліді Васильівні. Дякую за те, що теж наша співпраця триває вже досить тривалий період. I would also like to thank our colleagues and partners from the Ivan Franco National University of Lviv, especially Professor Lydia Vasilyevna Matsevko Bakerska, uh, for the fact that our collaboration with your university is also ongoing and fruitful. Також я хочу дякувати сьогодні і своїй колезі в нашому університеті пані професорки Ольги Ніколенко за потужну роботу, за співпрацю із нашими університетами партнерами, за організацію серії таких наукових семінарів, які зорганізовуються вже ось не один рік саме у такому тісному партнерстві Україна-Японія. I would also like to thank my colleague, Professor Olga Nikolenko, for organizing and facilitating the cooperation with our international partners and for organizing this series of international scientific seminars. Хочу відзначити, що я періодично долучалася і була слухачем цих наукових семінарів і була вражена, наскільки різноманітністю тематики наукових семінарів, наскільки глибоким змістом цих семінарів, які дали, я думаю, і такий кругозір і знання в галузі не тільки літератури, а й історії народу, його культури, в традиціях, І, звичайно, це було вдосконалення мовних навичок, саме англомовних навичок наших студентів. I'd like to mention that I have joined a few of these seminars and I was impressed by the diversity of topics discussed here, by the deep meanings that we have voiced here and uh, by the language skills of the students that have undoubtedly improved. Маємо за честь, і я хочу це відзначити, що професор Сусомо Нанака є почесним професором нашого університету, і ми пишаємося цим ім'ям і завжди пам'ятаємо про те, що коло науковців саме з факультету філології журналістики має наскільки професійних колег, справжніх науковців у галузі філології. It is a great honor. Uh, to know and be able to collaborate with uh, Professor Nanaka-san. And I'd like to mention that he is an honorary professor of, the, of our university and of the Faculty of Philology and Journalism. And it is an honor for us to have uh, a person like this be among scientists of our university and our faculty. Ми тепло згадуємо візит колег з Японії до нашого університету. І я маю велику надію на те, що в Україні вже скоро, ближнім часом, настане спокійний час, настане День перемоги. І ми обов'язково, щиро і привітно будемо зустрічати наших колег з Японії, наших колег з Львівського університету. І ось таке вже наукове зібрання науковців і досвідчених молодих ми саме зорганізуємо в стінах нашого факультету. We remember the visits of our colleagues from Japan with great warmth and we hope that soon there will be peace in Ukraine and that we can greet our colleagues from Japan, our colleagues from Lviv University here again and that we can hold many more conferences, meetings and seminars in person. Я дякую всім за потужну, дуже потужну роботу. Бажаю всім міцного здоров'я, конструктивного сьогодні діалогу, обговорення ваших підготовлених доповідей за роботою круглого столу. Бажаю всім нам міцного здоров'я, щастя і скоріше швидкої перемоги нашій державі. I wish everyone a positive and productive discussion today. I wish everyone to remain in good health and I wish a speedy victory for our country. 
Дякую, Катя, дякую. Дякую. Thank you. Thank you, Oksana Borisovna, for, so, for such warm words. And now I would like to give the floor for the introduction word to Professor Nona Kasensei. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, dear uh, Professor Dean Oksana Kulchuk, for your speech. Uh, I am uh, personally I'm uh, very uh, proud of the title of uh, honorary professor uh, which you gave me <laughs> two years ago and uh, uh, let me express the first of all let me express my uh, respect deep respect to you and your colleagues who uh, continue to teach and work and uh, help students uh, survive uh, this uh, tragic uh, war and uh, difficult days. And uh, I think education is the most uh, important, powerful uh, tool uh, to restore and reconstruct uh, your country. So I wish uh, you all uh, uh, victory and peace to Ukraine. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nanaka Sensei. I think now Katya will tell a couple of words about the purpose of our today's session. Yes, uh, thank you so much, Elena. Uh, once again, good morning or good afternoon, everybody. It is a great honor and joy to be here with you today. Please excuse my voice if it's a little raspy. I've been struggling with a bad cold for the past week but I'm going to speak as clearly as possible and I hope that you can understand me. So our main goal today is to share our opinions on different topics and explore each other's countries and cultures. I hope that you can have a positive experience today and that all of you leave today's seminar with the feeling that you've learned something new. We as moderators, so Olena, Toko and myself, we are going to offer you a range of topics and questions that we have found the most interesting and worthy of discussion. So please don't be afraid to speak. Don't be afraid to voice your opinions. We are here to share and communicate today. And uh, I'd like to invite Toko to uh, please explain the rules of today's seminar, how we're going to work today, if you can. Yes, thank you, Katja. So, what a tragic coincidence. I got a bad call last week too. So I tried to speak as clear as you can hear. So I'll confirm the rule of this discussion. We'll discuss several topics today, and we'll talk about it later. So in this discussion, students who want to speak, raise your hand, like, sorry, like this, or you can just join the conversation. And There may be some work in chat, so feel free to put some words in chat. Uh, so far, do you have any questions here? Right, okay. Let's move into, here's, uh, here's the ice lake. I remember we talk about our Oshi. Do you remember that? So, could you share your Oshi? Anyone? Oh, thank you. Adriana, please. 
Uh, yeah, I remember that Oshi, it's something that we like, the, some favorite, something that we really uh, enjoy. So my Oshi is our army, Ukrainian army, because uh, thanks to them, we have a possibility to be here even and uh, to live our daily life. Thank you. I was surprised that you you uh you understand the uh, oshi uh, so quick. <laughs> so ah, oh, bring us some, please. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Good. Uh, my OC is train. I like JR trains. And uh, uh, and uh, I'm, I'm very, uh, my, uh, sorry. Um, hmm? Yes. Oh, oh, oh. And uh, actually, Inna-san and Oruna-san's charming Japanese is my one of Oshi. <laughs> I remember Inna-san's kaidan. So I'm very sad to hear that they will leave Japan in this March. Thank you. Uh, yeah, a anything can be Oshi, Oshi in Japan. So, my... please. Good afternoon, dear professors and dear students. Uh, my name is Vika Biedova. I'm a first year student on faculty and philology and journalism. My, my biggest hobby is uh, learning languages. Uh, for instance, uh, English and German. English uh, is a unique uh, and understandable language uh, for many countries. In the future, I want to encourage more the children to learn uh, English and German because uh, foreign languages uh, play a huge role in our lives. Uh, for example, to travel, to visit uh, many interesting cities abroad, uh, make new friends, uh, and learn about uh, customs and traditions of a country. Another hobby of mine is numismatics. Uh, I collect uh, Asian coins of different countries. Uh, in my opinion, having a collection uh, is unique and uh, brings a lot of pleasure. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Um, Kasia, please. Yeah, uh, I'll say that my Oshi are cats. Ever since I was a child, I've loved everything uh, with cats. I wanted to have a cat of my own. And uh, I think uh, it's also very popular in Japan. Uh, I believe that a cat is a symbol of good luck, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so yeah, very simple. Actually, I love cats too. <laughs> Thank you. Ina san, please. Uh, thank you so much. Arigato gozaimasu, Rinka san. Thank you for your kind words. And yep, it's very sad that we will leave Japan soon, but it was a great honor and pleasure for us to study and to meet you here. Um, so, my Oshi is sun. Every day I wake up before the sunrise and I enjoy. Uh, looking at sun and having a cup of tea and just uh, think how grateful I am for my life and I just admire the beauty of the of, of the country of Japan in general. Thank you so much. Thank you. I think sun, the sun, uh, always encourages with its great energy. Thank you. So. We'll move into the next part, the discussion. So, Orina-san, please. 
Yes, thank you, Toko. Actually, I like this conversation in the beginning with you mentioning some symbols of the country or just your favorite things about the culture and the world around us. So I really find that interesting. And it made me think about some other topics about the symbols and the traditions and their, their role in our lives. So do you think there are some other like special symbols, not only that you find interesting, but those that are interesting for the whole nation. So can you remember any national symbols that are still alive in our modern life in Japan or in Ukraine? Yes, Andriana, please. Uh, yeah, uh, first of all, I'll, I'll talk about Ukraine. Uh, in Ukraine nowadays, uh, as usual, actually, the uh, um, important our flag, uh, our Ukrainian flag and the coat of arms of Ukraine, uh, especially uh, nowadays we can see uh, those uh, national symbols on the territories, uh, on their uh, maybe gates, uh, on the buildings, uh, especially on the territories that were recaptured from the Russian uh, army. So uh, we see nowadays uh, really a lot of these symbols everywhere on social media and so on. Yes, yes, you're actually right. And your words now, um, it reminded me of the challenge on Instagram that is ongoing now. It's called I see you a flag. This is the a lot of posts from Ukrainians all over the world, how they see our national colors, blue and yellow everywhere, in the flowers, in the, in the billboards, in just how the sky um, just contradicts with like autumn yellow trees. So it is really beautiful. So yes, thank you. Any other symbols maybe of Japan that are still popular now? Okay, Inna-san, please. Uh, thank you, Elena-san. I'm not sure whether it is a symbol, but actually it's like very like a trend, maybe not only in Ukraine, but in the whole Europe to eat sushi. And everybody knows sushi and like, like so much, but I would like to mention that like Ukrainian sushi or European sushi in general, it's kind of different from sushi in Japan. <laughs> so I guess it will be a great discovery for Japanese people to try sushi in Europe. <laughs> okay, this is interesting. Okay, that was Chisato-san. I think you wanted to say something, am I right? Oh, yes, thank you. Um, I think that in Japan, there is uh, some symbol. Ah, uh, sorry, sorry. I think that uh, we have the sakura in Japan that national symbols and I think Japanese like to see the nature in yeah. Japan and they are also like the season each season has the uh, very different nature so I think um, Sakura became the famous over the world and maybe you can see in not only Japan but other country like America or like that so maybe you can see Sakura in your country too Yes, you're actually right. I can remember one year in Ukraine, we have also held this Sakura festival. Of course, it was smaller than in Japan, but still a lot of people enjoyed it. Um, could you remember any symbols of other seasons in the year? Okay, maybe we will be back to this question a little bit later. And now, Lila-san, please. Yeah, thank you. I would like to add to Ina's words about sushi, that mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken, statistics says that Ukraine is the second nation in the world that eats sushi. Of course, it's a different sushi than in Japan, but still we do, we are obsessed with sushi. And about Sakura, that in Ukraine, there is a whole city in the Western Ukraine called Ushorod, and it uh, in the spring, it's full of sakura. It's the famous city of Ukraine because it has a lot of sakuras there. So yes, we also love uh, some parts of Japanese culture. 
Yes, it, it is very lovely. Probably that's the city that I was speaking about. Yeah, I can remember it. Okay, so then we have Anastasia and Darina. So uh, I wanted to tell you about one of the oldest traditions uh, in Ukraine. Uh, Ukrainians have uh, always known how to not only work well, but also how to rest, especially in winter when the amount of work uh, decreased in some way. So um, as a time in the evening, uh, in the winter evenings, uh, when no one work and young people combined uh, productive works and uh, the rest, by gathering at evening parties. They were called Vecherniti in Ukrainian. Uh, evening parties were held in rather relaxed atmosphere. Young people, um, girls and boys gathered in a house, told funny stories to each other, sing songs, or play cards. Uh, quite often, evening parties took place against the background of various uh, household chores, like the girls who are engaged in different handicrafts and uh, boys repaired various tools and etc. Moreover, they were ordinary and festive evening parties. If ordinary gatherings combine work and trust, then festive only were devoted to festivities, during which the girls often made uh, fortune telling and trying to find out their destiny uh, in different parts of the country. To this day, there are many types of uh, fortune telling games and various ritual games to receive the help of high forces to create a happy future. Nowadays, uh, there's still maternity uh, and young people often gather together, but uh, there's no background of various household chores, just uh, a relaxed atmosphere. And I think that's a beautiful tradition of ours. Yes, right. Actually, you remind me of fortune telling, and it's actually a big thing, a big part of Ukrainian culture together with superstitions. This is something that we cannot unroot. <laughs> Okay, yeah. um, I can, and now I see Oleksii wants to say something. Uh, thank you. Uh, I would like to tell you about oaks. Oak is a tree that has become one of the symbols of Ukraine. Uh, and previously, the oak was an analog of the temple where religious uh, ceremonies were performed. Uh, also, the oak tree has... Um, always been a talisman of the Cossacks. And near the island Kortica, there is an oak uh, tree that is uh, 700 years old. Uh, there are also oaks in Ukraine that are 1,100 uh, years. It's, uh, uh, for example, Maxim Zalizniak's uh, oak. Also, we have uh, the Taras Shevchenko's oaks more than uh, 1,000 Yes, and the oldest oak was found in the Carpathian. It was recently. Uh, his uh, name is uh, Champion, and he is uh, 100, uh, 1,300 years. Oak is a symbol of power and longevity, integrity and health. Uh, therefore, this tree is important and uh, relevant as a symbol for our country now. Thank you. Yes, thank, thank you for your... For your interesting notice, I actually come from a town with ancient oaks, <laughs> but our oldest one is 500. That's interesting. And maybe the Japanese one. So Masaki-san, please. Guys, um, you mentioned rose to symbolize living oak log in, in your country. And it's as well as Japan, we have a uh, roaster, which means uh, living oak log. And I also, I want to describe uh, originally in our country, chicken called messenger of the gods. And we have a shrine in East Asian shrines. Uh, it has a roaster. Um, it means uh, messenger of the gods. So I hope um, chickens all over the world bring the peace because um, chicken sometimes uh, means the messenger of the god and peace. So I hope chicken brings the peace for all over the world. Wow, thank you. It's actually a little bit similar to what we have in Ukraine because for us, rooster is the symbol of the new day and new coming. So it's traditionally very popular to wake up to the song of the rooster. Thank you for that. And Sumika-san?
Uh, thank you. Um, I would like to add a word to Nanami about Sakura. Uh, sakura uh, in Japan, Sakura represents meeting new people because it blooms on equal and it is a season of entering school or company or like society. So if we see Sakura, we become exciting for new opportunity. And one more thing, Asam is one of the big symbols of power in Japan because um, Japan's national flag is representing the sun. And although it is red, so I think um, which is not familiar in overseas because in overseas it is like sun is like yellow. So <laughs> I think yellow sun is, uh, no, red sun is I think in Japan only. Thank you. Wow. Okay. Thank you so much for this uh, for this edition. Um, yeah. Uh, I guess maybe we will have a time for a couple of other uh, people, but then we will move to the next topic because Toko is waiting. <laughs> um, so Sophia and Victoria. Today I would like to say, tell you about. Uh, symbols of our country, it's uh, the Ukrainian wreath and the uh, Pysenka. The Ukrainian wreath, uh, it's not just an ornament, uh, but a charm, because it has such magical powers that uh, it relieves pain uh, and uh, protects hair. Many different uh, flowers uh, were woven into the corolla. Each flower symbolized uh, something. Geranium is a symbol of uh, insubordination. Periwinkle is a symbol of motherly love, Rose, uh, mellow, and peony are symbols of faith, uh, hope, and love. And uh, there are 12 uh, flowers in total in the Ukrainian wreath. And uh, each one is a doctor, a talisman against the evil forces. And the next one is uh, Pysenka. Pysenka is a symbol of the sun, uh, life and immortality, love and beauty, spring revival, uh, goodness, uh, joy, and happiness. Each ornamental motif has a certain uh, sacred meaning. Uh, a painted prayer for harmony and peace uh, between people is made of them uh, on the Easter egg. In the Christian uh, culture of Ukrainians, uh, Easter egg uh, become a symbol of uh, resurrection. Thank you for your attention so much. Thank, thank you, Victoria. So yeah, apparently every flower is very meaningful in the culture, true. Okay, and Anna-san, please. Uh, thank you. I would like to tell you about uh, the willow tree. It's a really symbolic uh, tree for Ukrainians. Uh, the willow tree is a world tree, uh, the purification of the mysterious power of a woman. Uh, this tree is associated with war. So it uh, symbolizes uh, health and life. Uh, also, the wheel was considered the uh, progenitor of life, and the Milky Way was uh, its reflection in the starry sky. Moreover, willows were always planted on both sides of the roads. Uh, and also, one of the greatest Ukrainian writers, Taras Shevchenko, often used this tree in his works. Thank you. Yes, yes. Apparently, this is one of the uh, of the trees that is a big symbol to and a big meaning to Ukrainian culture. So yes, thank you to everybody who was sharing their ideas on this question. And now, since everybody has spoken, we can proceed to the next topic. So please, talk. The floor is yours. Thanks, everyone. So, thanks, everybody, to share many symbols that's so interesting to listen to <clears throat> so next topic is modern literature and cinema i remember nikorenko sensei introduced mio mi mio which describes how to overcome our fears and sometimes i think literature has um, power to encourage us and it describes many real world and I want to ask 
What books and movies have cultural attention literally, or what topics are popular, uh, popular with today's writers? So anyone? Anastasia, please. I would like to tell you about a book that I decided to read during the power outage this week, and it showed the issue of war and the extermination of the Jews. This story also helps me to understand that everybody seems to be can overcome if we have uh, good people around and if our uh, facing victory is strong. So it is called Noah's Child, and it has many elements like a formation of uh, religious worldview and simple human actions. Um, it's about a little boy, Joseph, who found himself in the middle of a battle and devastating time. Uh, the story took place during the World War II, and I was personally amazed by the incredible desire to protect the children, even against all prohibitions. A priest who put his own life in danger uh, by shattering Jewish children in an orphanage, and a pharmacist, my mother, Marseille, they saved. Uh, 2,000 to children. And uh, the author Schmidt compares Father Pons and uh, his children to the heroes of biblical stories. Uh, it is uh, uh, the heroes of the Don Villa, especially the Nessus, like uh, jo just Noah with his family and other passages escape from the Falcon's Ark. And I think everyone who reads this book will find something that. Uh, would be interesting for the lives. Yeah, I also uh, want to add some thoughts uh, about the different book, but uh, that's um, modern literature. So uh, I'd like to share some thoughts. Uh, um, I read the book Thief when I was about 15 years old, and at the time that book impressed me greatly. And uh, I would like to share a couple of words about the author. Marco Zuzak was born in 1975 in Sydney, Australia, as the youngest of four children of German and Austrian immigrants. Uh, his novel, The Book Thief, is a tale of an orphan, Liesel Memminger, who finds companionship and a new family in a tiny village in Germany during the Second World War. Zuzak picked the topic in part to relate the experiences his parents told him about growing up uh, during the war in Austria and Germany. Language, reading, and writing are presented as metaphorical components of expression of freedom throughout, throughout the story. They provide those characters who have or achieved the power of literacy, individuality, and personal liberation. Books uh, are nearly like characters in the narrative, and each of the novel is linked to a tale uh, of a girl's life. And Lizzo's adventure begins with a grave digger's handbook. Uh, she grabbed it from the snow uh, near her brother's grave, which marked the first gloomy points in the novel. The shoulder shrug Liesel rescued um, from the ashes of a flaming celebration of Hitler's birthday. This novel is about a Jewish man who is depicted positively, which is why it was condemned. In the bomb shelter, Liesel reads the Whistler, and it represents her complicated connection with Frau Hermann, and as well as a significant point of her personal development. The book Mein Kampf is hate-filled ideas of Hitler and his supporters. Uh, despite the fears Liesel uh, and her family, uh, they still conceal Marx in their basement, where he records his own struggles and experiences on the pages of Hitler's writings. And the book Thief is a title of the book Liesel writes uh, leading up for uh, the Hemo Street explosion. It is the book that Dash retrieves from the ashes uh, and gives it to Liesel after she dies. Uh, books are more than simply an occupation for the girl in the novel. They're her salvation and her heart. And this novel shows us a frightening example of war, violence, and Nazism. Here we can see how little Liesel goes through her horrible reality. If only it happens in books and books only. But nowadays, Ukrainians have to face the same problems. The terrorist state has been trying to deprive our culture, our freedom of speech, and our lives. They destroy our museums and steal our cultural heritage. They burn books written by Ukrainian authors. Our children have to spend their childhood in the bomb shelters because Russia shall Ukrainian territory. 
For us, the book Sif is more than just a novel. I think it is a portrait of our reality. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you. Uh, yeah, sometimes uh, book describe describes um, uh, uh, even if it's fiction, sometimes it it close to real words. It's kind of some uh, feel so scared, but that's, but it's at the same time, uh, I think that's why we should read book. Thank you. So Julia-san, please. Oh, thank you. So I have a big interest to the books of Stephen King and he greatly supports Ukraine. So I chose him to read some of his books and I read one of his most popular novel, Carrie. Uh, it revolves Carrie White, a friendless, bullied high school girl from abusive religious family. And, uh, and she discovered her telekinetic powers and her powers uh, can be like a metaphor for the anger and psychological trauma caused by abuse. And this uh, issue is about bullying and abuse. It's uh, very important to raise, I think. And um, the biggest moral of this book is like just simple as um, simple idea. But um, yes, uh, don't be a bully. And because most people don't realize how much direct damage bullying can do to a human being and um, Carrie already had her issues and the bullying gave her power to her strengthness and uh, her willingness uh, to use her new found um, gift for destructive purposes so I definitely recommend you uh, this book to read because it's full of thoughts and um, you can contemplate about different issues Thank you. Stephen King is a um, famous writer in Japan too. I think he's uh, he's good at writing some kind of kind of dark feeling in our in our heart. Thank you. So, uh, Anton, please. Yeah, so the book that I would like would like to present is the is the one that really changed my mind. So it really flipped the way I look at things, and I think it's very beneficial for everyone here and all around in the world to read it. The book is called *Man's Search for Meaning*, and it's written by Viktor Frankl. So Viktor Frankl himself, he's a neurology and psychiatry professor. Uh, he's a doctor, and this book is written in the times of. Uh, as a result of World War II, because he himself, when it started, he was writing a book, write this book. And when he got, when the world was started, he got captured. And what do you think happens with your soul at that moment when you lose your job because his manuscript got, got stolen? He got sent into the Auschwitz in this moment of complete lo loss of hope. How can you deal with it? And that's what the book is all about, is that even in the moments of biggest weakness, in the moment of biggest fear, you can try and rise above it. You can rise above yourself and, and just improve. And it's one of the biggest lessons of it. And uh, the quote that I would say really describes it is that everything can be taken from a man. But one thing, the last of human freedoms, is to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances, to choose one's own way. And I would say that it's an extremely good book, especially in today's time, because it's not always about the grandeur of things. It's not always about the things like surviving the war. It's not always about surviving the concentration camp, especially in modern times when the when there's such a technological advance, advancement, our problems, our pains have moved 
intrinsically. They are not, they're not so much on the outside. Look at all the people here, academics, uh, students. We all suffer daily when we, uh, when we face exams, when we face our own psychological issues. And what you should do as a person in such case is that you should or look at it not as, oh, I'm so miserable. Oh, I'm in such pain. Why does it happen to me? Instead, what would be a better way is to look at it. If I'm in such pain and in such, such suffering and I'm moving towards some goal, you shouldn't be afraid of it, but rather you should be proud of it in a way. Because if something causes you such great stress, it means that you're towards moving towards something greater than you, towards something that can definitely improve you. And what really helps you in your life, I would say, is that even for us in Ukraine, you would say that what can be worse than having a war in your country, but I would say that we can look at it as how strong can we as a nation and as individuals can be after surviving such horrors. And that's a great lesson too, is that you shouldn't shouldn't be afraid because yes, we don't have uh, basic things. We may have, we may have, we may not have electricity. We may not have uh, heat. We may not have. Some of us have lost our friends. Some of our relatives may have died. It's a great, great tragedy. But you can take it and use it as a kind of way to hone yourself, to make yourself stronger, like a sword that has been put into flame. The, the longer you put the sword into flame, the stronger it becomes, the same with the human mind. And I would rather, I would like to end this short presentation the way Victor Flank did in his book is that, so let us be alert, alert in a twofold sense. Because since Auschwitz, we know what man is capable of, as in Hiroshima, we know what is at stake. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so how, how strong the message is, I, I feel. Uh, so I, I'll nominate some Japanese students. Uh, Linka san, please. <clears throat> Okay, thank you, Toko-san. Uh, I'm not so familiar with modern book, modern book, but I tend to tend to read uh, fantasy and adventure and magical one. And I read uh, the the Little Prince, the Petit in French, and of course with dictionary. Thank you. Uh, so, I don't know. It seems there's a, a little time for. So, I, I nominate list two mm. Sophia and Victoria, please. Thank you, Takasan. I want to uh, say that now Ukrainian cinematography is developing and moving forward. Many films of modern directors uh, have been nominated for serious awards. Uh, Ukraine writes its own history and talented people highlight these events through their creativity. One of the films that will not leave anyone indifferent is a film directed by Akhtem Sitablaev, uh, Kiborgs. Uh, this film tells about the defense of Donetsk airport in September 2014. The most impressive thing um, is that this film is based on real events. The film uh, tells the story of the Ukrainian military, uh, which for the first months uh, have been fending off edicts for opponents and um, who are trying to get one of the key points for basing and uh, transferring uh, troops. I recommend watching this film to those who want to learn more about history and the heroism of uh, Ukrainian soldiers. Thank you very much for attention. Thank you. <clears throat> and uh, sorry, it, it's last one to nominate. And Ta Tatsunet-san. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay. Maria san, sorry, sorry, Maria san. Thank you very Please. much, Dr. san. Uh, actually, I would like to mention briefly about the book I started recent, uh, reading less recently, and its name, uh, Dollmaker of Krakow, and the events are happening at the time of World War II. It seems to be a fairy tale at the beginning, but then you realize that it is not just as simple, and there are different topics connected with war, uh, lost childhood, and many others. And actually, there is mentioned uh, a war started by rats against the kingdom of dolls. However, it has has many parallels with the Nazi occupation of Poland. And uh, the book actually shows how one can find the light uh, and courage inside to cope with the darkness of circumstances. Thank you very much. Thank you, sounds so interesting. Sorry, Oleksii. Uh, Oleksii, sorry. Uh, uh, so, so please write down in chat. I, I'm interested in, in your recommendation, but there's no time, so I want to give to Katja to talk about next topic. Okay, <clears throat> thank you, Choko Sam. Uh, well, a couple of years ago, our world was challenged with global pandemic. COVID 19, as you well know, uh, has led to one of the biggest health crises of our time. And since then, a lot has changed when it comes to our daily lives, our education, and our perception of the world in general. We have learned to work remotely. We have discovered a new and interesting world of distance learning. And we have gotten used to being online more than ever. So I would like to ask you, what is your COVID experience? What has changed for you uh, throughout the pandemic? What have you learned? What have you found useful? If you have, I'd like to invite you to start this discussion. And I can see that Sophia and Victoria uh, would like to say something, so please. Thank you very much, Katya. Thank you very much, Katya. Personally, I was sick with COVID-19 uh, several times. Fortunately, I managed without complications and quickly recovered from the disease. Uh, but I forever understood that there is nothing more valuable than health. Uh, the pandemic has taught us to appreciate every second of a happy life. Uh, this change um, in the world have affected various aspects due to the fact that people isolated themselves, uh, internet trade and education uh, reached uh, a new level of development. New opportunities for learning have appeared uh, even of a di distance, which gives people a chance to engage in self-education. Uh, people began to listen more to their body and health, and those who personally met the pandemic uh, changed their life values. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, thank you, Sonia, and I agree with you. It has definitely pushed and challenged us to develop in new ways. Alexei, please. <laughs> Thank you, Katerina. It's uh, known uh, that the pandemic has become a drag on the economy and society. Uh, the disease uh, claimed uh, many lives. Even during the war, uh, statistics uh, are kept. Uh, for example, as on uh, January 30, uh, 2023, uh, there were about uh, 5.4 million sick people in Ukraine. Of, uh, more uh, than once, uh, once, uh, 111,000 uh, people died. Uh, my whole family was sick uh, with COVID-19, but we were vaccinated, uh, so it probably helped us uh, to get sick easily and uh, recover quickly. <clears throat> we continued to work, but we couldn't uh, rest because the borders were closed. Uh, tourism and hotel business, uh, as we know, uh, suffered uh, the most damage. Uh, but the education system was also affected. Uh, some of uh, the time, at the beginning of the pandemic, uh, there were no classes, and uh, other times the classes were online. It was difficult for students, parents, and teachers. Uh, however, I believe 
that uh, uh, not all professions uh, can be learned online. And uh, school children uh, lose uh, some opportunities for, uh, for example, in uh, socialization in real life. Uh, therefore, the issue of the uh, quality of uh, education remains uh, painful for our country. Uh, but the, there are also positive uh, points. Uh, for example, the process of uh, digitalization of education has acce accelerated. And uh, people have got uh, new skills, uh, working with a computer or the internet, uh, access uh, to new knowledge was opened and um, it became easier to combine work and study. Uh, that's for me, thank you. Yes, thank you, Alexei. Uh, Maria, please, I think you haven't spoken today yet. Okay, thank you, good. Morning and good afternoon, everyone. So, um, if to talk about uh, the pandemics of COVID nineteen, uh, if to talk about the quarantine, uh, I think I think Maria froze here. Maria, can you hear us? Okay, maybe there's something with her internet connection. Uh, I hope he, she can join us uh, a little later. But Evhenia, if you could uh, please talk in the meantime. Okay. So, well, speaking about uh, the physical symptoms, I, I think it was uh, pretty much okay. I mean, I had some common symptoms that were not really serious. But the worst thing about COVID-19 for me was probably uh, the difficulty in understanding what it is, especially at the beginning. I stayed at home and I was scrolling news all the time. And I realized that it was a new kind of disease. And for me, it was uh, really difficult to accept the fact that the humanity has to deal with it somehow. So um, personally, for me, it was difficult, difficult to cope with COVID-19 emotionally. Yes, thank you for sharing your experiences. Uh, Anton, please. Yeah, so my experience has been quite different towards uh, this situation with COVID because at the very beginning it's actually been extremely positive towards my life. You know why? Because um, it was a great, it was 11th grade, uh, we were uh, about to pass the exams so or the national exam to get into the university and what the COVID allowed us is to, allowed me, is to, because the, the exams got delayed by like two to three months, I think. And what it got me is that precious time and it allowed me to, it's one of the reasons why I'm actually right here right now, probably. It allowed me to study better, grind the exams and get on the university on a scholarship. So it's been great, but, and also when the university started, I was thinking, whoa, how great. I can just don't care about education. Don't study that hard because everything is so much easier. I don't need to spend time on a commute and I could just play games every day. But only did I later understand, started to understand that I was missing out on a lot of, as, as previously said, opportunities of socialization, opportunities of maybe being more challenged in university, being challenged with study. But that real, but overall, it's just a, it's one of the experience in life. And right now, I view it as mostly positive because it's right now it would, would allow me, for example, to just do more things and it it makes you learn to self-organize that's one of the biggest lessons of COVID because you either do it's like do or die you either get it or you don't you either self-organize become better use the time that, that is spared from for example commuting to the university by trying to improve yourself and if you don't do that then you lose all of it and it's an important lesson Got it. yes Thank you, and I agree with you that self-organization has definitely grown to be a very important skill. I would like to invite some Japanese students to speak. So Toko-san, I can see your hand. 
Thank you. And I feel so, I was feel so difficult with this infection, <clears throat> but because um, in Japan, we, we couldn't go to school for two years and we, we used to Zoom to attend class and due to avoid being COVID. And, but uh, in such situation, I, I found we need to, in, in that situation, we need to um, communicate each other more, even we wear a mask, but we, we had to do it. So I, I learned, learned much from this situation. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Choko-san and Rinka-san. I can see your hand too, please. Thank you, Katrina-san. And um, I learned that uh, to stay health healthy is the most important thing in my life. Uh, when I got COVID, I, I can't eat and I can't move. I was only in, lying in a bed uh, since I had a bit heavy fever. So uh, I learned that a common life is important, uh, which, I was, which I was forgetting. Thank you. Yes, thank you for sharing your experience, and I'm sorry you went through that. Uh, Anya, please. Thank you. I would like to say about one of my biggest problem. It's distance learning, uh, because I, the person who prefer to work with uh, my group mates and uh, my professors uh, in real life. So, um, I'm sorry, it's better for me to see them in real life when I want to say something or I want to learn something. And uh, another one of my biggest problems is that when you sit at home, um, it's a huge chance, chance that you would have procrastination because when you sit at home, uh, it's better chance to you to become a little bit lazy. <laughs> thank you. Yes, uh, thank you. And I agree with you. It's definitely been hard on everybody, not seeing our friends, not seeing our colleagues at university, our teachers, and so on and so forth. So yeah, definitely do want to see each other in person. Julia, uh, please, if you can talk about your experience. Yes, uh, COVID-19 definitely has changed my attitude to education, like um, gave me another point of studying because I entered the university during the epidemic and could not enjoy the student atmosphere because I just stayed at home because I expected a lot of fascinating days uh, with my new people around and I just uh, felt isolated from uh, normal life. However, there were some advantages in this because I got enough sleep and had time for leisure and I didn't spend time commuting and uh, had more energy for other stuff. Sometimes it, it was really difficult because I missed um, the real emotions and um, life reactions of my group mates. I wanted to see them not on screen, but in the corridors of the university, but I got used to it. And, um, but I still miss them <laughs> because of the warmth. Yes, I can understand what you're talking about because, uh... Well, I personally graduated from university before the pandemic, but, uh, you know, I'm doing my PhD right now and I've got distance classes. And of course, I would like to see my classmates in person. I'd like to talk with them. And I think it would be a much more 
immersive and positive and interesting experience if we could all just gather uh, in one room. And just to add to what everyone has been saying, um, I'd like to mention that the pandemic has probably become kind of backgrounded in today's Ukraine, because we've got uh, a different kind of problem now. Uh, unfortunately, the war right now is the most uh, important thing that is going on, and it has brought different kinds of challenges. So for us right now, it is not really mandatory to wear masks when we go to the supermarket, for example, right? Because the most important thing right now is staying alive and for people to stay alive and stay healthy and preserve their homes, even when there's shelling, even when there's bombing, you know, survival is the most important thing. So nobody really cares uh, about if you wear a mask or if you don't wear a mask. Um, you know, it's more about just bare bones for the physical survival. So, you know, it's kind of bittersweet uh, for me personally, just remembering those pandemic days. I used to think it was so hard. I used to think, how will I uh, do online learning? It is so difficult. It is so challenging. How can I not be in the same classroom as my peers? How can I not be in the same classroom as my teachers? And now I wish this were our biggest problem. Now I wish that our biggest problem was the pandemic because really we can all survive quarantine uh, when we are staying at home. But you know, we can't really control what's going on right now um, with this terrible war. So, you know, it's a lot of difficult feelings, mixed feelings uh, during this time. And I think we'll need some time to process those. Olena San, uh, if you could maybe transition to the next topic. Yeah, yeah. It's, it was interesting actually how in life suddenly our worries <laughs> shifted from the pandemics to war. But I know that in the pandemics, one of the activities were that we started doing when we had nothing else to do was like binge watching some films or TV shows or something. And I know that now in the chat, there is an ongoing discussion with really valuable recommendations of films and books to watch and read. And to me, it was, uh, it was a nice flashback when uh, the film uh, Hacksaw Witch was mentioned. And uh, actually, thank you to Japanese students for, for bringing up this topic and also for asking interesting questions about the film. So now, if you can remember the film and uh, you have any thoughts on it, or maybe any other sorts of, or any other films that, or book that has uh, helped you with some issues, the book that inspired you to cope with your problem or the film that did so, um, if you would like to share, so please, this is the space to do it. So is there a yeah, film or book that helped you with some issues in your life? Maybe something inspiring or something that helps you to distract from your problem? Yeah, so uh, Anna, please. Okay, uh, then Vladislav. <laughs> Vladislav and Alexandra, please. Yeah, Good morning to everyone. Uh, my name is Alexandra Sreta, and I'd like to say about really um, about movie that. Uh, help me in this situation that we have now in our country because it's really hard to live in the world where uh, you don't know what's going to be uh, today and tomorrow and it's sometimes really scary uh, and uh, the movie uh, Atlantis uh, by Ukrainian director uh, Valentin Vasanovich helped me really 
uh, it's movie really special movie because um, we have lots of movies about war, how war start, uh, how war uh, look like, but uh, not so much movie about what we can have next after the war because we <clears throat> we hope that in the end we can have a peace and a happy ending, but it's not so easy. Um, and this movie actually about it. It's movie post-war, post-apocalyptic war, um, and um, it shows uh, really important things why we shouldn't uh, fight, why people shouldn't want war uh, to conquer some uh, countries, because it has some um, really not, not good end, because it's not like uh, we stop shooting and we have happy ending. No, there will be victims, there will be broken cities that uh, will be impossible to live in. And uh, so much of people who uh, just will be just lost in this, uh, after this. And uh, really, um, and it, it uh, after I watched this movie, I understand uh, the phrase like it could be worse after the war, because yes, it would be, and we must be ready to um, rebuild the country. We must be ready for some you know, like um, for situations uh, that will be not so uh, happy like we hope. Uh, we I don't mean that we shouldn't hope but we must be ready for everything and um, also we must remember the price of peace uh, the uh, the price uh, of war uh, actually because uh, why we should uh, why we should um, protect uh, ourselves from war our world from war and um, yes <clears throat> this more uh, about it and uh, also, it has really special style um, that uh, is really like Japanese uh, in Japanese traditional movies. Uh, I remember that uh, in last century, uh, in Japanese movie, there were a static camera and it was really classical um, speciality of movies. And uh, this movie also has such a uh, static camera and it really has some, it brings some uh, new meaning also for story because you feel, it feels deep because of such um, things, I guess. Um, I think that's all. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Alexander, for actually for highlighting that it's so crucial to be ready for all the consequences that war brings with it, with itself. And also thank you for another recommendation in the chat for the movie called Homeward. Yes, it was, it was a really valuable film and very inspiring. Thank you. I believe you added to everyone's watch list now with your comment. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, okay, uh, Lila san please. Yeah, thank you. I would like to speak about a book that I really like to read because I need something to distract and to relax because I feel like my mental health is not really going well recently. So I decided to read uh, children, modern Ukrainian children literature because I feel like they are light and positive and help me distract. Uh, I would like to show you this little book. It's called uh, Pretty Monster. It's pink and it's uh, like to uh, make friendship with uh, children. So I feel, when I read this book, I feel like I'm going back to my childhood. I forget about all the traumatic things that happened for, the, for an hour or two. I like in the other reality that are sweet, nice and friendly. So I think this is also important to uh, find something that will brought you away from the cruel reality like we live right now. Yeah, yes, true. I actually also started uh, started reading 
chil children literature and it's very valuable and I love finding some traces to get back to kindness and to find this inner kindness and happiness and resilience in inside of ourselves so thank you Lida for bringing up that topic okay I think uh, Sophia and Victoria thank you very much uh, during the winter holidays, I read John Boyne's novel uh, The Boyne's Striped Pajamas and later watched the film adaptation. John Boyne is an Irish author who has won numerous literary awards. His work as The Boyne's Striped Pajamas touches the subject of the Holocaust. It is one of the most heartbreaking portrayals of the Second World War. Uh, the story is about German boy Bruno, whose father worked in Auschwitz. Once, during a walk, uh, Bruno saw a boy with a shaved head and dirty striped pajamas sitting behind a wire fence. His name was Schmuel. Uh, they began to communicate and later became friends. Bruno walked to this fence, bringing with him some food for Schmuel. Uh, one day during the meeting, he noticed uh, that Schmuel was very upset, and the reason was the disappearance of his dad. Uh, Bruno couldn't leave the Schmuel in trouble and offered to help him uh, to find his father. He entered uh, the Auschwitz area, where he and other men and boys were driven into a guest chamber. Uh, the novel's language is not dramatic and there is no violent uh, scene in the book. The writer knows how to write about the most tragic pages in human history in an extremely simple way. In addition, the final phrases in the novel, in which there is no a single word war, sound like a call to all humanity to understand uh, its foolishness and horrible effects, as well as a belief in a better future. Nothing like that could happen again, not in this day and age. Thank you very much. Yes, thank, thank you for sharing the story. And it is truly, truly powerful one. And it's incredible how much uh, horror uh, of realizing the whole situation the film can bring to its, to its viewers. And yeah, especially taking into account that no world no word war like itself was mentioned. It's incredible how the author made it. So yeah, thank you, thank you for mentioning that. Thank you. Uh Urara san, please. Thank you, Amazon. I want to share my favorite movie, and that is also Global Musical, which is name is Hairspray. I think some of maybe know about a story. That is a story about one girl become a famous she is really good at singing but like in Japan it's normal to judge by the physical appearance and some people she has like a normal body like not skinny too much but we have to be like a skinny things because in Japan we tend to thinking about like a Japan, Japanese girl had to be skinny or have to make up in everywhere if we become like older than 20. It's kind of a weird situation but in Japan, we are living in living in the majority. Though, if somebody does a little bit different different things from others, we are judged by like a stranger or a different from the others. So we have to be like similar to the others. But the movie is about she's totally different from the others, and she become her famous because he is she is really talented. So it is difficult to be, it is difficult to upsetting myself because I'm not a perfect from like physically, like a mentality, a lot of the things. So it is a hard job upsetting, them, upsetting myself. But after watching the movie, I can do like a, like a self but love. It's hard to do and accepting the love myself, but I think the self love is really important and I want to all the Japanese people wanted to watch the movie because I don't know about the Ukrainian people, but in Japan, it's really hard to accept the others and in myself too. So, so self-love is really important and one of the Japanese issues I really want to share about the movie, but thank you. Yes, thank you. It's, it's absolutely important and sometimes it's like just overthought um, overthought issue of self-love and self-respect and also as well as uh, 
as well as other feelings of, of self-appreciation. So thank you about that. And probably I will give the word to Vlad now. Um, yeah, thank you, Elena. And yeah, my name is Vlad, and I'd like to share my, my little comment on one of the movies that was represented by the Japanese students on one of the seminars, which is uh, Hexo Ridge, uh, an American movie. And first of all, I'd like to say thank you to Japanese students for presenting this movie to us, for letting us uh, watch this movie and know about it, and also for presenting their understanding and presenting their perspective on this movie and this story. Because from my from my understanding, that was something really in like different from something that most people would think about this movie and would think after watching this movie. And my personal perspective uh, is that, first of all, this movie, of course, it tells the story of a single person uh, and it tells us a historical story of one man. Um, but I also think that, of course, as many other war movies and war films, it teaches us and that we should always remember about the events of the past to in order to to remember them and to prevent these events from happening in the future. Um, yeah, so once again, thank you for sharing. And it was very interesting to watch it and to think of it afterwards. So thank you. Yes, uh, thank you. Many thanks for your comment. And I would share it mentioning that I also have read the book presented in this seminar called The Lonely Castle in the Mirror, and I was totally impressed by that. So I believe that's the true value of our seminars now. So I take note of every single recommendation, every single mention it, because that's how we culturally and interculturally develop. So thank you for that. I believe now in terms of time, we are forced to to end the discussion i'm so i'm really sorry to say that and i'm expressing my best my best and biggest gratitude to everybody who has spoken today and who has shared some some small pieces of their culture with us so thank you very much and now i would like to give the the word to our prof the word to our professors. So maybe Professor Lydia Matsevko Bakerska is willing to say something about the seminar. Uh, dear Professor Susumana Nakasan, dear Olga Mikolaevna, dear students and masters of Dama University, Korolenko National Pedagogical University of Poltava, and Ivan Franko National University of Lviv. Today we finish the series of discussions of the student international seminar, which is just a few years in the middle of two countries, two continents. Uh, today we are finishing the series of meetings of Students Winter International Seminar, which has been bringing together the youth of two countries and two continents for several years already. All participants of the seminar, both students and professors, are the participants in the creation of modern history. Ця сторінка історії є особлива тим, що пишеться подвигами українського війська на полі битви на неуторих українських повноземах, де мала би рости пшениця і серед неї мали би пристої махи. This page of history is special because it is written by the deeds of the Ukrainian army on the battlefield on the barren Ukrainian Chernozems, where wheat should grow and poppies should belong among it. Натомість кращих кращих залишається там назавжди, щоб кращим ставав світ. Instead, best of the best stay there forever to make the world a better place. А світ показує себе у найвеличніших спосіб. Ті країни, ті народи об'єдналися заради утвердження чесноти і цінностей. Всі ми спільно створимо новий чудовий світ. Без зла. Без насильства, без ненависти. 
And the world shows itself in the most way. All countries, all peoples united for the sake of establishing values and virtues, all together create a new wonderful world without evil, without violence, and without hatred. <laughs> Було великим знеском суспільних справ. Було виявом нашої однодумності, нашого спільного прагнення здобувати світ безпеки, впевненості, майбутнього кожної людини, вартості кожної національної культури. Іжі of the meetings of this year's seminar was a great contribution to the common it was a manifestation of our single-mindedness and our common desire to build a world of security, confidence, and uh, uh, the future of each person, the value of each national culture. Нам важливо пізнавати звичайні і традиції національних культур для того, щоб зрозуміти джерела нашої схожості. It is important for us to learn the costumes and traditions of national cultures in order to understand better the sources of our similarity. Нам важливо зрозуміти справлення до глобальних проблем для того, щоб зрозуміти, яке майбутнє ми творимо сьогодні. And the attitude towards global problems in order to understand what kind of future we are creating today. А також нам всім важливо мати можливість подякувати усім тим, хто думками і справами поряд з нами. It is essential for us all to have the opportunity to say thank you to all those who are with us in thoughts and deeds. За кожним екраном сьогодні не лише доля окремої людини, окремої родини і окремого навчального заходу. Behind each screen today is not only the fate of individual person, an individual family, and the individual educational institution. Тут і тепер доля наших народів. Ми є голосом тих, хто просить про допомогу, дякує за допомогу і показує, як можна слухати і чути один одного, намагатися один одного зрозуміти. Here now is the the fate of our peoples. Here we are all the voices of those who ask for help, thank for help, and show the, uh, how uh, you can listen and hear each other and try to understand each other. Саме тому значення студентського семінару особливе. Його роль особлива. That is the significance of the student seminar is special. Its role is special. Львівські студенти висловлюють глибоку вдячність за запрошення, за увагу до своїх доповідей і думок. А керівник групи львівських студентів уклінно дякує шановним організаторам і всьому товариству за величезний досвід і уроки добра, якими була кожна наша зустріч. Students express their deep gratitude for, uh, for the invitation, for attention to their reports and opinions. And the leader of the group of Lviv students sincerely thanks the esteemed organizer, organizers uh, and the entire society for the great experience and lessons of good that each of our meeting was. Thank you. Many, many thanks, Professor Lydia matevko bukherska for concluding our seminars. And now I would like to give the word to, Olha, to Professor Olha Nikolenko, please. Thank you, Olena. Dear participants of our scientific seminars, dear Professor Susumana Nakasan and dear Professor Lydia Vasilievna, I would like to say many thanks for the opportunity to develop our mutual cooperation to change our knowledge, life and cultural experience. The series of our seminars was a bright page in the history of our universities. To my mind, it is very important for Ukrainian students in difficult times. We have had unforgettable impressions from all reports. I have liked our round table too. Thank you for your opinions and thoughts. 
Special thanks to Professor Susumu Nanaka-san and Japanese students for supporting Ukraine and for supporting each of us. I'm very happy that my colleagues and I are still in Ukraine with our students and university. My family and I decided to live in our country in difficult times and save and do all that we can. I admire the courage and resilience of many Ukrainians, such as teachers and children. Right now, I am preparing a big report for our international partners about the war's influence on the Ukrainian children and about art therapy for them. We made a survey for children from different regions of Ukraine, Kherson, Dnipro, Luhansk, Kyiv, Lviv, Poltava, Khmelnytsky, and others. We have already received many results. It is interesting that the children have shown us an example of bravery and courage. They believe in Ukraine. They are fighting their fear and winning over it. And they consider uh, helping others to be their main goal. They see power and salvation in art. They particularly appreciate books and films that help them overcome their circumstances and be strong. That's why I think our seminars are very important for understanding and overcoming the consequences of war. I suggest we gather all the reports and publish them in a joint collection of scientific papers. Thank you so much again, and I wish you all the best. I wish you all good things. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Olha Nikolenko, for such a warm words and for such an inspiring project that will undoubtedly help the Ukrainians under such hard, difficult conditions. I would like to give the final word to Professor Susumunanaka Sensei to conclude our seminar. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Olena. Uh, Olena, Katya, Toko, thank you uh, for today's uh, good organization and uh, dear students uh, for uh, for active uh, discussion. And uh, I'd like to express uh, uh, special thanks to uh, uh, Lydia Vasilyevna and uh, Olya Nikol Nikolaevna, of course. And uh, to Ukrainian students, uh, you showed us, our students, uh, the uh, uh, strong motivation. You gave us a strong motivation to study. Uh, you showed uh, humanities, uh, uh, what humanities can do in a difficult situation. Yeah. Uh, and... Uh, mm, I hope uh, we will uh, make the next, the fourth uh, seminar uh, this December in a peaceful situation. And we will uh, meet again in, in December, this mes in December. And uh, uh, lastly, excuse me uh, for a little bit straight words, but uh, stay safe and stay alive. That's the most important contribution you can do for your country and your uh, family. Uh, that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Nonaka Sensei, for your warm words and for your words of support and best wishes to all the Ukrainian students. So I wish all the best to all the participants, to Japanese students, students of Lviv University, to our professors. And uh, Thank you for coming, thank you for sharing, and thank you for joining this discussion. I had a lot of pleasure being here and learning something new. Thank you. Okay, so Kat, uh, Lena, to say, uh, do you have any words from your uh, chairs? Katya Toko, if you would like to conclude. <laughs> so through this seminar, us, oh, please. Oh, thanks. 
through this seminar, I found how hard, how difficult to communicate in English, especially when I want to express my feelings and what I want to say. But I also found the joy to share our ideas, our cultures to each other and to learn the things. And I found the joy to learn the things I never never knew, such as uh, Iwan Kupala and Miss and the other symbols in Ukraine. I was I found so interesting to learn in it. I appreciate for professors to host this such a wonderful seminar and appreciate students to sharing your comments and your ideas and your presentations. And thank you for your cooperation today and your kind attention. Thank you. Uh, Kasha-san, please. Thank you. <clears throat> It has been a pleasure and an honor to get to know all of you. And I would like to thank, first of all, our professors who have put in an extraordinary amount of work to make this happen. I would like to thank everyone who has been able to join, everyone who has been able to contribute to our seminars, everyone who has prepared presentations. Despite all the difficulties, despite being in different parts of the world, we did it uh, and we had some really positive and productive discussions. And I think that every one of us here can take something home to think about, to discover and to keep learning about each other's cultures. So I would like to thank you for this opportunity. It's been a joy to be here with you. And I wish you all the best. Yeah, thank you, Katja. So please, uh, uh, please uh, finish your essays, and uh, we will make a good collection of uh, essays. Right, Olya? Yes, please, uh, and we will wait uh, your articles. What uh, we. Uh, we very appreciate uh, for your reports and uh, thank you, thank you for your uh, very good work. Thank you. Okay, okay. So uh, uh, I'm sorry, but uh, 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 we are ending the, our seminar. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, uh, I wish you uh, uh, good luck and uh, yeah, good study. Yeah. So thank you very much. Bye bye. Goodbye, goodbye. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Goodbye. Olya, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank yeah. you. Goodbye. Keep in touch. Yeah.